y'all ready? Oh, oh. there you go. Yeah. Right in your eyes, too. Yeah. yeah, that's much better. All right, it is 7 o'clock. We will get our Town of Frederick uh, meeting going on April the 9th, 2024. Uh, Jason, would you mind taking roll for us, please? Trustee Mahan? Here. Trustee Brown? Here. Trustee Tabelli? Here. Mayor Kreitz? Here. Trustee Lamock? Here. March? Here. Trustee Padilla? Here. Mayor, you have enough for quorum tonight. Wonderful. Thank you. Let's stand and join each other in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right, do we have any changes to our agenda this evening? Anything appears? No? We do not. No, okay, thank you. I do believe we have a special presentation tonight. Uh, Miss Amy Olson, uh, the community grant funding request from Frederick High School. Would you join us at the podium, please, and share with us your funding request? Thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is Amy Olson. I'm at my address is 6287 Gorm Street in Frederick. I am the Frederick High School Booster Club president. Um, we are requesting um, $2,000 from the town of Frederick to help fund the fifth annual senior parade. Um, it is, as you know, I mean, you guys probably have heard every year from Chris Tone. Um, this is a started in 2020 for our graduating class back then to kind of do something for them since they're in the school year kind of got put up in smoke. <laughs> so um, we are looking for money to help cover for the police um, services, temporary use of permit application fee, and public works fees. And also anything additional would go towards the police um, that helped out with our prom down in Denver for extra security. Um, anything and everything you guys could do for us, we would appreciate. I and mean, we love working with you guys every year on this. And it's just a fun event that we do for the community and for our graduating seniors. How many seniors do you have this year? Um, I think it's about 380, Okay, I believe. And it's going to, each class, like this is the smallest <laughs> class. Next year's is like over 400, and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Wow. That's good to know. Is that about right, Kevin? That's Does about that right, yeah. sounds about right? <laughs> a lot of kids. Yes, if you walk in the halls, <laughs> it's just crowded. It feels like more than 380. There's about 1,400 kids in the mm -hmm. school. Yeah. Yeah, and I think like this will help bring in for the community. I think they generally we have all like the feeder schools and stuff, stuff come out and watch the seniors and stuff like that. So it's about 500 people who come and watch the parade. Great attendance. Typically. Yes. How Good. much did we provide you last year? 2,000. Yeah. Any other questions for Amy? Yeah, yeah. About that. Do we have a date? Or, I'm sorry, I may have missed it. Um, it's on May 15th. May 15th. The last day of um, seniors. Last day of high school. And it's already well, here. What would the funds be used for? It? It'll be used for the police um, presence, the public work presence, meaning putting out the barriers for the parade, and also the application fee that we used, or the boosters provided for to have this. <clears throat> Chris often? I see Chris all the time. He's out of town right now for a family emergency, so that's why I'm doing it. He'll never be forgiven. I was hoping to see him. Yeah, he'll be, he'll still be doing, maybe we'll con him into <coughs> doing this next year, <laughs> but um, he um, unfortunately is in Utah today. But he'll be there taking pictures. Yeah, he'll definitely be there taking pictures and and at every other event that's going on. I don't know how he does that. It's amazing. Yeah. Ask him, he'll do it. <laughs> yeah, he does. He does. He will do anything for the school and this community. Well, thank you, Amy. We uh, no further questions for Amy tonight. No. Um, so some direction from our board would be appreciated on this funding request. The request is for two thousand. You all tell me what you'd like to do tonight. Madam Mayor, I'd like to recommend we approve $2,500 for our Frederick High School Senior Class Parade this year. Second. 
Motion and a second. Any further discussion? No. Okay. <coughs> Thank Trustee you. Mayor. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem March. Yes. Trustee Padilla. Yes. Trustee Brown. Yes. Yes. Trustee Lamont. Yes. Motion passes six to zero. Wonderful. Right. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you. Thanks. It's an event that I really find a lot of joy out of. Yeah. And it, I really enjoy seeing the kids happy. I do too. That's why yeah. I do what I do. And this is my last year doing it. So <laughs> I, oh. <laughs> work, but yeah, it does. Does. one of these years I'll be able to say that to you. <laughs> you can do after prom, Kevin. You know, <laughs> Kevin, don't do it. Do it. Don't retire. save yourself. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Yes, thank you. All right, um, we're going to move swiftly into our public comment. This portion of our agenda is provided to allow members of our audience to provide comments to the town board. Please sign in and I will call you. Uh, it, let's see, I'm not going to read that part because you can take as long as you'd like. Um, Cheryl, would you start us off tonight, please? I probably didn't have to translate that. <laughs> First, thank you all for your hard work. Oh, kind words, kind words. Uh, uh, she says, uh, First of all, uh, congratulations to those who won. I may not have, but I didn't lose either. It's nice to know I have at least 488 friends. I am truly blessed. Hey. <laughs> Great day. <Okay. laughs> moving, moving on with regards to reaching out to the community with the surveys. <laughs> uh, I emailed you each the U.S. Census from 2020 and the American Community Survey. Uh, for Weld, Weld County and Frederick. Uh, it shows stats on our population, which will support grants. And, and go ahead. <coughs> Specifically, uh, disability type by detailed age with a hearing disability, uh, population under 18, and so on and so on. Um, it goes through a, a number of criteria. Um, with a vision difficulty, uh, cognitive difficulties, um, with an ambulatory difficulty, uh, self-care difficulty, um, independent living, um, <coughs> difficulty and 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 so, so on there are others that, but uh, 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 anyway she said I think I may have said that I'll say it again it shows stats on our population which will support grants uh, you won't reach the people with disabilities by a blanket outreach uh, a better way is to send to groups who serve specific populations like like St. Teresa um, for uh, Hispanics who might go there who are, or others who are poor. Um, there's a list of uh, there, um, uh, groups, there are groups who serve specific Okay, um, uh, uh, can you go through the schools to invite the families with members with disabilities? Um, <laughs> I'm asking. You're asking. Oh, she's talking to you. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure you could. I mean, there's the, the school's always looking to make sure that we're helping every part of its population. Okay. Um, you have a comment here with. Uh, the, the ACS gives, uh, did you want to finish that thought? Gives, 
Okay. Okay. Uh, raise, raise. Move on. Moving on. The li library is a great place to reach those who Eng whose, whose English is not their native language. Um, uh, you can reach out to local churches to share the surveys. Uh, she had mentioned St. Teresa's as an example, and or others. You know, there are lots of churches, um, there are lots of lots of groups and count and such who deal with the, the disabled community. If you ask me, I will give you contacts. So. Uh, you're just throwing that out there. So um, just wanted to bring it to your attention. And uh, that's what, she, anything else, Cheryl? Okay. That's very helpful. Thank you. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Hmm? Yeah. Thank, thank you, Cheryl. Cheryl. <coughs> I think we'll continue on the, the path of um, forums, surveys, asking the community for their feedback. But I appreciate hearing that there are different ways to reach a greater audience. So we'll work with our team to make sure we do that. So thank you. Bill, secondly, how are you? Very well. Good. <laughs> Mayor Kreitz, trustees and staff, my name is Bill Meyer, and I'm here tonight representing United Power. And primarily to extend an invitation to our annual meeting, which is next week, April 17th. We have a dinner starting at 4.30. <laughs> And then a business meeting thereafter where we will elect in our next board of directors. We have three openings. So we're eagerly anticipating that. And we would love very much to have each of you there and the town of Frederick represented. I'm also here because this year, 2024, is United Power's 85th anniversary. We've been a cooperative for 85 years. And I personally have been around for about half of that time. When I look at it, the length of time I've been at United Power, definitely half. So I have our annual report. I'd like to both extend in to each of you tonight and uh, tell a little story. United Power serves 16 municipalities. We have franchise agreements with 16. And I will say for me personally, and I think most of the management and directors at United Power would agree that the town of Frederick and the Frederick community is probably our most dynamic <laughs> of relationships over the years. We've had some challenges and the important thing is we've worked through them and kept our relationship both on a business level and for me personally engaged. And I always feel welcome here. I just got my CDL renewed, so I'll be able to drive a truck again, yeah. in parade, which I'm very always honored to do. And um, looking at what built on what matters, I, I can't help but think back of the mayor before <coughs> Mayor Tagliente, and I think her name was Jane. But that was my first introduction to the town of Frederick. And Didn't then, go. of course, Mayor Tagliente, and, and on we go. So I've been a part of this town ever since then. And some of you may know I was selected by the family to give the eulogy for Carmen DeSantis. And I know that in my heart that is because of my roots here in Frederick as well. Honored to do both. So I would like to hand out this annual report. The report pages, page 11. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the young lady had a grand opening for E470. <laughs> but you. it's a very oh. historic document of okay. these past 85 years at United Power. Wow, look at that. Mm. Holy moly. Fantastic. You have no gray hair. <laughs> yeah, and I'm also very honored to have uh, Max photograph of me for your That's right. That's so, right. Yeah. You know, it's uh, just a two-way deal of our relationship, and I'm very proud to be the representative of that. So thank you all very much.
Oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, congratulations. Thank you, Mary. Yes. And we'll have a proclamation, which you may see in the next couple of days and uh, about that. And we're honored to have Frederick participate and be represented that way, too, as well. Yes. All right. That's thank all. You. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, your positivity is always so infectious, so I appreciate seeing your smiling face near everywhere I go in our town, so thank you. My, my privilege. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> I did sign that, by the way, proclamation. So. Yeah, it's already signed, sealed, and almost delivered. <laughs> almost. Uh, that is all I have for public comment this evening. However, I'll just leave that open in case... That changes, but we can move into uh, staff reports. Brian, please. Yes, I'm Mayor and members of the board, just a couple of quick items. Uh, the first one, I just wanna give a quick update on the town clerk position. We did go ahead and extend an offer and we actually have that position filled. And uh, Trish Davids, David, she's actually here tonight. Um, she's just here observing because she wants to. I did not ask her to come. <laughs> shows her dedication she's really excited uh, she brings a lot of experience actually from the hr background um, as well as just her navigation and leadership and and, and navigating leadership in general um, so we're excited to have her on board to help us with moving that forward um, especially with our our values and and the importance of uh, what she talked about through the process of of our values and customer service and um, who we are as Frederick. So we're excited about that piece. He's here tonight? Um, yeah. Yes, she is back there. At the <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I'm never going to come here again. <laughs> the other piece, I just wanted to have Ryan give a quick update on the Chamber of Commerce annual dinner that's coming up, I think, towards the end of this month. Good evening, Madam Mayor and Board of Trustees. Just wanted to uh, pass along a little bit of communication with you all. I believe an email, if it didn't go out today, is going to be going out tomorrow uh, regarding the annual uh, Chamber of Commerce Awards dinner. It's on the 26th of this month. I believe that's a Friday evening. Um, this year, they're holding it at uh, a hotel in North Glen on I-25 and 120th, the Delta Hotel. It's a Marriott Hotel. It looks nice. The conference center does. Um, and the inquiry was to see if you all had any interest in participating and attending. We have a table um, that has been provided. Um, as it turns out, uh, the town of Frederick has been nominated for an award that night, a community impact award. So it could be um, a good opportunity to see some of our uh, counterparts and some of our partners in the region. Um, I think economic development is looking for responses by the 19th. Um, so that way, whatever seats aren't filled, we can uh, look to some staff, but we certainly want to give the board uh, first pick at being able to go there and, and have a good night. I think the theme is uh, diamonds and, and denim. So I don't know if that means you're supposed to wear like jeans and <coughs> diamonds. Diamond pants, um, probably. <laughs> it's how my. I I don't own diamond pants. Um, I own denim. Um, <laughs> but, anyways, just wanted to share that with you all. And if you have an opportunity to reply back to the clerk's office to let them know about your availability, uh, it'd be wonderful. Uh, sounds like it's going to be a great evening, and um, I I think I'll be there. Uh, Sierra, I think, is planning to be there as well, um, and then usually about half the time I can get Brian to be there. I don't know if this is one of those years. It might be his off year. I don't know. We'll see. Thank you. Diamonds. Thanks, Ryan. Hey, Ryan. <laughs> How's Max and his young one doing? Please. Yes. Update. Um, yeah, so uh, Max and, and family had their little one. Um, now, I guess it's going on close to three weeks, I suppose. Um, all is well. Baby is healthy. Pictures are um, adorable. Um, uh the baby as well. Um, and, um, Max is loving his time at home. Um, I think he's really easily falling into the role of um, going to be having a, a daddy's girl um, type of thing. You know, he loves having a daughter up there. So um, it sounds like Augie, his other little one, is uh, loving having the opportunity to be a big brother. 
Um, also, I do everything in my power to make sure he's not working. So I am intentionally not communicating a ton with him because I want to help um, him be there with the family. But it seems like all is going well. And I know several people have um, done their part to reach out to him as well and uh, bring him meals and things like that too. So, And if you're interested in any of those types of opportunities, you could speak to me afterwards and I can point you in the right direction. Thank you. Thanks, Ryan. Oh, thank you. That's nice. It's great updates. I appreciate that. Maybe we could just go around during trustee reports and see if anybody can commit to that by tonight even. We could do that later. <coughs> All right. Any questions for Brian? I have a question for Brian. Sorry. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Thanks. We had a we had a tr a tree program that was wildly successful and also I think frustrating for a lot of folks. We got a lot of feedback on that. Um, so I just curious if there's been any thought or discussion about potentially expanding that program or 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 the feedback that we've got from from folks in the community about the early start and I understand why that happened but I'm just yeah no, 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 no. he's <laughs> like let me it did get Kobe's <laughs> dying to tell you I know that each year it's just growing we do we do 70 right we did this 150 a pop so it's just about eleven thousand um, dollars certainly if the board wants to look at doing that again we can we could look at um, what it would look like if we did a second one at another point throughout the year I, I definitely think in terms of popularity, <coughs> it used to not be the case where um, it's grown because we've had an, a lot more residents move into our community. And so I think that 70 was already here before nine o'clock. Yeah, we had people lined up at 645. Oh, wow. <coughs> so I own that we opened early. You know, it was 45 degrees, the wind was blowing and it started to rain. I've got 30 people standing in line. A lot of them are older. The, a lot of the people that showed up weren't going to get them anyways. So I made that call. I own that. I eat that. They were not happy, but they were probably not going to be before number 70 in line. And actually, we gave away 72 because I printed two extras in case we screwed them up while we were filling them out. So we gave those out too. But um, no, we'll expand it next year. Um, we could even look at doing a fall program. We're keeping the data on all of it. So I'm curious to see how many of them are actually redeemed. We're working with the tree farmer on that. So if we issue 70, but only you know, 40 or whatever are redeemed. We can keep the budget number down and go ahead and give more away. But it's one of those things that we're really crowdsourcing the urban tree canopy. So it's a worthwhile investment, regardless of what number we put at it. I would like to hope we'd get to a point where it would become unaffordable, that we have so much demand that we actually have to have some higher limit. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll add more on next year. Kobe, how, I know we gave what, 150 per yeah they have a face value of 150 dollars the reason we did that is a three quarter to one inch caliper tree which is a good size for a you know a regular family to plant is about 120 so that gave them a little extra money for some starter fertilizer mulch stakes the things they <coughs> needed to get to make that tree successful so how much have we spent in it spent on this program in the past uh it's usually been between five and eight thousand and part of the reason it was a little bit cheaper was we bought cheaper trees and then sold them the stock itself was cheaper that's why we went with the tree farm their stock is so much better but it's also more expensive so like say we did 70 at two uh ten thousand bucks this year it'll end up being closer to 11 but um you know every time we add another 10 we can do another 70 so and Colby, how long do they have to renew their voucher? They have until July 15th, okay. so. So maybe we could come back after that and look at the fall based on how many renew. That's kind of what I was thinking. And actually, if we continue to use the tree farm, typically in the fall, they'll have a two-for-one sale um, just because they're trying to get rid of a lot of stock. So it could be advantageous if they're able to partner with us on that to be able to do it then, too. Yeah. You just took the word out of my mouth. A two-for-one <laughs> sale or buy. I yeah, get one for a penny or something like that. I th yeah, and some of them are like 10 bucks. It just kind of depends. Um, part of the reason we gave them away so fast is we had five people giving them away, so it didn't take very long to fill out 70 <coughs> vouchers. So, yeah. 
I appreciate that you saw how many people were in line and knew you wouldn't have enough vouchers for all those people. So instead of having them stay in line in the rain and the wind, you said we're out and that upset people because it seems like we opened the door and gave them to, to our friends or family or something. The appearance of it not being on the up and up, I think is where we're at. But yeah, I appreciate that you were trying to bring comfort to the people that we're not going to get. And if you were, you know, 20 or 30 feet away from the door, just the way we had it set up with five people in a straight table, it did probably look like that from outside that we were just throwing them. And that was sort of the end of it. But we had a pretty good system in place to do it. So, yeah, I read Doom Scrolled Facebook all day Saturday, and that was a nice blast. Isn't that fun? (laughs) I haven't haven't done that for two years, so that was a lot of fun. There are also comments out there, though, that, there aren't other communities that do similar things. Every community does it just a little bit different. Right. You know, there's there's pros and cons to each of it. The point is, is it's popular and it's going to be easy to expand and we will do that. So. Yeah. Well, and take those comments, you know, listening to every citizen is important, but take the ones that come to you on social media with a grain of salt. People are always meaner behind their computer screen. Yeah. I stood there for two hours until 11, whatever, 15 and talked to everybody that came up and had some good conversations with folks, so nobody yelled at me too much in person. Good. I'm sorry that that happened. I am too. I just it was, it would have been nice to have 500 of them, but I'm curious what the number would be until we had some left over. Right. So. Yeah, I think that's a good approach. We could come back end of July and see what those numbers are, and then see if the board wants to look at other options for the fall. Yeah. And we're able then to put all that information into GIS based off their address. And actually, our GIS has some really cool urban tree canopy mm. programs. So we can actually track that over 20, 30 years or whatever to kind of what impact that program had. So, But I doubt there's probably any consternation on the board of spending that money. It's a good investment. So I certainly wouldn't argue against it. Did you, by chance, track the number of people that didn't get one? I just kept a head count. It was about a hundred that I talked to either that left the door or I talked to out front. Thank so you. that was counting everybody. So you had some of them were two or three, but mm-hmm. probably figure 50, 75. We probably turned away that would have got a household voucher. So do what you can with what you have, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And April weather. Appreciate it. Thank you. We'll have something to come back end of July. Yes. So, Mayor, real quick, just um, it's didn't have it in the packet because I just found out about it Saturday morning. But it's, I sent you an email yesterday indicating that our judge has taken a full time position with the city of Boulder as their presiding judge, and as such, has given us notice that he will be wrapping up his services here at the end of May. Um, and so I wanted to get some feedback from you all in terms of what you would like to see done in terms of a recruitment process, if you'd like us to kind of follow the pattern that we laid out a couple years ago, or if you'd like to see something different. I gave you all of the uh, RFP that was um, sent out back then in word form. I've already gotten some feedback already in terms of some of the updates and changes that need to be made, which I wholeheartedly support, and I can make those changes. But really, it's just a matter of what um, timeline and process do you all want to go through for that recruitment? And then we can make it happen. Anybody have feedback right now? Or maybe we can provide it to you over the next couple of days. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Do, I think there was a recommendation for a potential exit interview with Judge. I think that's, sure. We that can work on trying to get that scheduled as well. Any other staff update questions from anyone? No? All right, our consent agenda items are next. Our consent agenda items are considered to be routine and will be enacted by one motion and vote. There will be no separate discussion of consent agenda items unless a board member so requests, in which case that item will need to be removed from the consent agenda and considered at the end of the consent agenda. We have one item this evening. Would anyone like to remove that item for discussion or provide a motion this evening, please? Mayor, I would like to uh, approve the consent agenda item 
as is. Second. Motion and a second. Thank you. Trustee Padilla? Yes. Trustee Brown? Yes. Trustee Mahan? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem March? Yes. Trustee Lamarck? Yes. Trustee DeValdi? Yes. Motion passes six to zero. Thank you. And we have one action agenda item this evening. Tracy, if you are free at the podium, please. Thank you. <coughs> Yep, right here. <laughs> Madam Mayor and trustees, happy spring. Um, today I'm going to uh, discuss where we are, where we're going with grants, and what we hope to achieve by the end of the year. Uh, once again, I always am uh, strategically uh, looking out for our plan as it comes to funding for some of our projects for the towns. For 2023, we submitted, we were awarded 11 grants and five grants were declined. We raised $2.7 million and had an increase from 2022 when the grant program started, when we started in May of 2022. And so for 2023, we, we did get a, a Dr. Cog grant, and we also got a, a minor home repair program in appropriations. They finally signed the bill a couple weeks ago by the president, so we are moving forward with that. Uh, we are still waiting to hear about the uh, collaboration on the wildfire planning grant. Um, I reached out to them a couple weeks ago and they were still could not give us a response on that one grant. And as of uh, at the end of the year, we obligated the $1.13 uh, million dollars of the $3.5 million ARPA grant. And that should be starting in May. Uh, for the first quarter of this year, we've submitted three grants with a total of $80,000 for uh, the police department. And uh, so uh, the first grant is for PPE for our officers. Uh, the second grant is a flock system and which is a, a security system that is uh, solar paneled. And the third one is just a, a community appropriations grant uh, to support the victim's assistance. In the works for the second quarter, we are looking at two federal opportunities. First one, uh, we're looking at the Safe Streets for All grant. This is gonna be a planning grant for the entire town. Uh, the purpose of the grant is to reduce fatalities and including pedestrian uh, fatalities. Uh, we're in, working in collaboration with the engineering department and the parks department. There's two components of the infrastructure grant. The first one is planning, and then the next is implementation. Uh, we hope to do a submission for the Safe Streets All grant the first part of May. Uh, the next grant is another uh, grant to support the Victims Assistance Program. This is out of the DOJ, and this would uh, support the victim advocate salary. Uh, one initiative uh, that we've been working on since February with the Public Park, uh, Public Works Department is the uh, electrification uh, infrastructure grant. Uh, what we thought in our head that we could go ahead and get this done, the NOFO is not out yet, uh, the notice of funding is not out yet, and we've been participating in the National League of Cities boot camp to prepare an application. Well. Through the boot camp, we decided that we are not ready yet. Um, there, last year, they awarded $600 million in the first round of this grant, and this is for charging stations for throughout the country. Boulder County got $3 million. The whole county did, but there was only one town that got that grant. So really what we've been attending these webinars and seeing that a lot of the focus of this grant is on regionalism and partnerships, private partnerships, businesses, 
And so we, we feel that by next year we would be ready, but it is recommended through this uh, funding that a collective of municipalities apply for this grant. So the Carbon Valley, this includes Decono, Firestone, really to be strategic because we, I just don't feel we would be competitive with this grant. So we hope to, by this time next year, submit an application for this. Uh, quarterly, we have been trying to start training with our departments on the grant process, pre-award, post-award. Uh, the OMB just updated their uniform guidance, and so that's exciting for me because it's a little less complicated in the internal controls of, of the grants. And so we hope to be creating a centralized system of our here in Frederick for our grant processes. Uh, one aspect of that that uh, I'm going to be leading and hopefully enlist other leaders throughout the town is purpose-driven grants. And I hope to start this in next quarter. This is really where you focus your grants and invest in everybody's thoughts. And are we really making the right investment with our projects for the town? So I, I would like to include some of the town's leadership for that too in this process. So uh, finally, uh, in the packet is the resolution of 24R, 20-24A is for the approval of the first quarter of grant submissions for the police department. And thank you. So Mayor, if I could piggyback on part of the reason we're doing it in this format was so uh, we were running into challenges of having grants that needed action but not aligning with our board meeting. And so the thought was, We'll do all of these moving forward, knowing that we might not get some of them, but then we don't have to come back and ask kind of ad hoc as we go. Great. So any questions on anything? So with the city of Dakota or the uh, town of Firestone, do they have grant? Um, no. No, Erie does now. Erie does, and, but no, they don't. So when we talk about regional partnerships, that would still be yourself and your team kind of writing yes. it, and they just, they just right. They would be kind of like a sub recipient, kind of uh, where we would administer the grant, and then they could con we could contract out with with that. I mean, that's probably the uh, the best thing. Yeah, right? yeah, and that makes us very competitive for any of these infrastructure grants because. You know, there's some, it depends on the funding and what the goal is of the grant. Sometimes we don't meet their goals, you know, and so if we bring in a bigger pot of, of our munis municipalities, then it makes a stronger application. <coughs> Madam Mayor, I'd like to recommend approval of resolution number 24R-24, a resolution of the Board of Trustees of the Town of Frederick, approving first quarter 2024 grant submissions. Further discussion doesn't appear to be. President Lamarck? Yes. Trustee DeFeldi? Yes. Trustee Brown? Yes. Trustee Mahan? Yes. Trustee Padilla? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem March? Yes. Motion passes six to zero. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, let's see, we have one discussion item. Kobe, we have the Frederick Skate Park lighting update. All right, so we were tasked um, back in October uh, by Mayor Kreitz to find some options of how we could improve the lighting at the skate park. Your first question is probably gonna be, why am I here? 
<clears throat> you're gonna find out in a second, but the price tag to replace the lights is really high. So we came up with a couple alternatives that we wanted to throw your direction just to see what you guys thought. Normally in parks, we'd have something like this. I'd just make the decision and we'd go forward. <laughs> but enter your own snappy pun here. This is highly visible. Um, 50 foot poles in the middle of town are gonna stick out. So at the very least, just informing you guys if you don't have guidance so you know what's going on. But we are looking for some guidance tonight, but no formal action. So it turns out it's a lot harder to take a picture of those skate park lights when you're standing <laughs> right there and get it to turn out. So I just stole one off Google. The point is, is they're not very good. Um, in fact, the whole the part of the reason it took us so long to come back, once we really started digging into the conduit, we found a lot more problems I'm surprised they passed inspection, put it that way. So we spent a lot of time this winter digging some stuff up and just fixing what was already there. But they're really bad lights, they're horribly polluting. For those of you that aren't lighting engineers, basically you want lights to face down, right? Anytime they face to the side, all that extra light shining up in the air, it's shining off in the distance, that kind of thing. So we have three options tonight. Option three is kind of a little bit of a, um, a bunch of smaller options. Basically, full replacements are going to be about four hundred twenty-two thousand. Um, we can do some activation controls, and I'll talk more about those in a minute. That's only about sixty-two thousand. So, what's a complete replacement look like? These are what sports lights are supposed to look like. You're supposed to have the area that you want lit up and nothing else. So, it should almost be pitch dark outside of the zone of influence of those lights. These are Musco lights. They're the best in the industry. It's what everybody should be using. So this is what they would kind of look like. And the thing I really want you to pay attention to in this picture, look how tall the poles are. That's the only way you can get downward facing light. You have to get higher. Consequently, you have a 50 foot pole now that sort of sticks out a little bit. What's the pole height now? 30. So they'd be 20 feet higher wow. on a berm that's already 18 feet higher than surface grade. So. Now, the one advantage that I didn't put in the PowerPoint, we would only have about seven light poles with the complete replacement versus about 15 now. So we would definitely cut that down. And that includes the parking lot too. Uh, the parking lot would stay the same. It's already got really good downward facing lights, so they're in pretty good shape. So what are some of the pros? Obviously, this is the way to do it. We should have done this from the start, but here we are. Um, they have a 25-year warranty, so the nice part is, is once we do make that investment, we're covered for a really long time. That uncovers anything that could go wrong with them outside of just us going to, out and running them over. Um, the downside, we're not done with the FRA master plan yet, and I'll kind of touch on more of that at the end, but the question to me, and that's why I was kind of here, are we lighting everything? We've heard from the community that they don't want a lot of lighting over there, rightfully so, makes a lot of sense. So why spend the 422 now and turn right around and say, hey, we're not going to light anything but the baseball field and then nothing. So is that other option of saying, hey, let's marginally improve it for the short term where we can have this thing turn off when they're not using it and things like that. And if we decide to make that investment, roll that into the first phase of the FRA improvement and then maybe even be able to get a grant to cover part of it like GoCo or something like that. As a standalone project, that's going to be impossible. Um, option two, this is the more short-term option. Please don't pay attention to the actual push buttons. These are Norwegian, so if you can't <laughs> read them, that's why. <clears throat> uh, but this is actually a really good company that has a US version. The point is, what this does is it basically allows us to zone out the different amenities at the skate park. If nobody's using them, the lights turn off. So every 15 minutes or whatever, some kid has to go over and hit the button. There's a little siren or something that comes on, and you have to be careful to not make the siren more annoying than the lights were in the first place. <clears throat> but basically, they hit it, they stay back on for 15 minutes. You know, if it's 20 degrees, it's snowing, it's whatever, they're just off. So then they're not bothering folks on days where people aren't using it. That's going to be about 63000 bucks. We have to recircuit a few things. And also, there's some cost in there. Right now, we have no security lighting in the skate park. We have the big giant ones, but no little ones. So at night, it's pretty dark out there. Luckily, the security lights from the parking lot do shine over just a little bit. But it's pretty easy to have vandalism and a lot of things. So this would also install security lights. So when the bright ones kick off, the less bright ones kick on. So if you're out there skating, it's not just completely dark uh, mid-jump. That does buy us some time. Uh, to get further into the plan, but it doesn't solve the light issue. When they're on, they're still 
bad. So option three, basically we could do nothing, um, or conversely, we could just turn them off, and that would solve the problem too. I don't want to do that, but that is an option. Um, or we leave the controls and we just change the times that they're on. I don't like that one because there's a lot of days nobody's out there using it, so I like the push button better. Yeah. Uh, our recommendation is option two, but I'll be real honest, we can make one work just fine. The pros and cons really balance out for both of them. It's that <laughs> level of investment. Do we invest 60 some thousand dollars and redo something in a few years, or do we invest 422 and maybe redo something in a few years? Or at that point, decide that we aren't gonna have that much lighting over there. Um, I'm taking this to Prost tomorrow, just the way the calendar's worked out. But I can pretty confidently say they're, they've been very supportive of the skate park lights. Even when we tried to turn the time back, that turned into kind of, kind of an issue there. Um, that having been said, I think having them on until 10 o'clock is way too late. I think at 9 o'clock, go home. Nothing good happens after the sun goes down. Um, so we were thinking, you know, that kind of the seven months where it's warmer, let's go till 9 with the push button. When it's cold in the winter, let's do 8. You know, by that time, it's cold. Go home. And then that does allow the rest of that project to come through. But And you know what? If we decide in a year, two years, or something like that, that the public didn't think that that was a good enough option, we're not out a lot. We can reuse a lot of that recircuiting with the new lights. So 60000 is a lot less bad to have to spend twice than 425 To put the 425 in perspective, that's almost enough to renovate a neighborhood park. From this recommendation, it, it implies verbiage could be um, subjective, but that by 2026, we'll have phase one of FRA completed? Uh, no. Uh, we'll be lucky if we've started on it. Okay. Um, and the problem, what we don't know, and that's why I included this, we haven't figured out what phase one is. Now, it stands to reason to the skate parks in phase one, because it's the first thing off Godding Hollow. Part of the other reason I say that, the lights aren't the only problem at the skate park. The landscaping's problematic. There's a lot of turf we don't need. There's fall height issues off of certain jumps. There's a lot of other things that need done there. It's probably gonna, by the time we put the lights and all that in, it could be eight or $900,000 of improvements that thing really needs. So is it better for us to try to roll that into a three and a half million dollar project that's getting some improvement at the same time? And just to kind of give you an idea, this isn't out to the public yet. It will be very shortly. We just got it Friday. But we're kind of looking at a uh, bike track to go next to that. So there's other amenities to complement that skate park. But that's where the, all right, are we lighting that question kind of comes in. I'm, I'm torn, right? Because the community's made it very clear to me they don't want things lit up. They'll survive with the baseball lights and stuff because they're not on that often. The chance of having a Saturday game go past dark you have that, what, 15 times a year probably. Um, but like even looking at sport courts and stuff like that, if that's not what they wanted, then we're not going to do it. So, I mean, obviously we'll always have safety lighting and that kind of thing, but there's a big difference between that and a 50-foot sport light. Yeah, um, this is why I'm here, because they're all bad options, so. <laughs> it's just tough because, them off was the way I to mean, go. the skate park was $7 million, and it was not an easy conversation for this community when it was built, for, I mean, in different phases. It's, it's wonderful, and it was needed. There's a demographic of students and guests who use it all the time, so I'm so glad we have it. Uh, they, you know, youth have something to do, and I appreciate that we were able to give them something to do. But um, so it's it's difficult because we've already spent that money from a community's perspective. It wasn't all ours. A lot of it was oil and gas funded. But um, but to now say we did it wrong and and now we don't want to spend as much money on the lighting, even though we did it wrong. That's hard. That's hard, too. You know, and so I'm not saying just because we spent seven million, let's spend another half a million. But I continually hear frustrations from residents of Moore Farm about those lights and you know and those that are on you know streets nearby as well and they're so bright like inappropriately bright yeah aggressively they're, they're, bright. i will legitimately admit if you're coming off grant street on 
towards Godding Hollow from right. Firestone, they're a problem. Yeah. So, yeah. What plan do we have to have to get this FRA concept implemented by 2026? <laughs> Well, the plan will be implemented by then. Okay. <laughs> You'll have it for adoption by the end of this year. What on, I'll be real honest. I didn't want to get too far into the details. We have a really a robust work session coming up in early June where we're going to go over a ton of park and open space planning things. What I'm kind of running up against, we have about $5.5 million in fund balance in the open space fund. And now with the passage of 2C, that really gives us a lot of opportunity, right? We can spend it on different things. Something that's unknown to us right now is Miner's Park. So if we go and we're moving around Centennial Park and doing a lot of these awesome downtown plan things, that's a huge investment. And so depending upon how those funds and stuff work out, you know, if we use Fura, a lot of conversations I have on that, that stands to be a huge draw from that fund balance. So I hate to draw that down for something else when we have that. And also we have like 10 or $12 million in deferred maintenance, just stuff that we already have that needs fixed, whether it's public landscapes or medians or playgrounds or whatever. So is it responsible for us to go build the new flashy thing when we've got neighborhood parks that have a playground that's 25 years old? And that's where some of our internal planning has been coming along. How do we prioritize those? But if you're talking about, you know, a five to $10 million investment just for one phase, when's that realistically going to happen? <laughs> that was a very reasonable response, damn it. <laughs> Good news. When we have uh, Silverstone commercial development come online, yes. we did not waive any of the sales tax associated with open space and the police department safety tax. So as that development fills out and starts generating that revenue, then the amount of money available for these things will increase. It's just an, un an unknown. We, we have an idea of what we hope it will be based off of the financial modeling that was provided as part of the UA URA process. but. And that's the reality. And at the same time, we are looking at our impact fees through the impact fee study, and that's another one-time um, dollar amount that we're collecting for improvements to parks. Ideally, we would have one dedicated to community parks. There could be FRA, Centennial, Mendoza, all those different things that we're putting together. Mm -hmm. I think part of that planning could also include, like Colby said, in these discussions like in June is when we make a, the leap for local funding, mm -hmm. you know, what is that phase? And maybe there is a phase that with grant funding and additional support, we can We've been setting the entire FRA plan up to be super competitive in GOCO. Just the way we've done our outreach and documented things, we should get one. The, we've been trying to go with their, what they call their centennial program, which is like one-time grants up to 15 million, but those are incredibly um, hard to get. But that's kind of been the baseline of where we've done a lot of our outreach. Good, that's nice to hear. That's why you keep seeing me at events with my sad poster <coughs> and my tiny table. <laughs> I know. I'm glad to hear, though. So in terms of turning, just turning the lights off when it gets dark, can we just do that now? I already did last winter. <laughs> uh, yeah. I got a lot of calls, like a lot. Like mad calls? Yeah. Um, they weren't a lot of, I mean... A lot of them were kids, right? So they were texts and like other things that I didn't understand. <laughs> um, but there was a lot of parents too. There's a lot of parents that have teenagers in that neighborhood that love that thing, you know. And they, it's a great place for them to go. And yeah, and they are outdoors. Like I'm a parks guy. I'm supposed to be the one telling your kid to go outdoors. Yeah. I didn't know there was like a time cut off where <laughs> that went back to playing video games. Um, so yeah, it, we're gonna hear it either way. Once they're just like any amenity, once you've already got it. There's an expectation to have it. I don't think we're going to hear anything by reducing the hours. In fact, we could maybe even turn them off in the off season or look at 6 p.m. or something like that. But I think that what I hear the most from residents when there's a reasoned response is that they're on too late. And why are they on when there's no one there? Huh. This solves both of those problems. It doesn't solve all the problems, but I think it's a pretty good step in the right direction for a fairly minor investment. There's a siren that goes off. Push I didn't even want to use the word siren. So you can get one that's got flashers. It can be a buzzer, whatever. It's just important that they're ADA accessible because there's different, you know, types of sounds and stuff and visual, that kind of thing. But, yes, I have seen some where it is literally worse than the light 
they're just controlling. So can you control how how quickly they turn off then too? Like you said, fifteen minutes. Can you make them like thirty minutes? You can do whatever you want. Yeah, you just program. If you get a digital timer, you program it into it. Or if it's an old mechanical one, it's just set that way. We would go with a little better one though. So we can, can they change. break the buttons? Like can the can somebody break? Uh, it? yeah, but they're tough. Okay. It requires more than a skateboard to do it. Put it that way. <clears throat> I have some security cameras, and we'll get those funds back through the municipal court. Yeah. <laughs> love it. I love it. That's funny. With our new judge. That's our judge. <laughs> well, thank you for taking the time to research op options for us to consider. I appreciate, you know, anytime you get that amount of feedback from your community, it's something that, like you said, needed to be addressed a long yeah. time ago. So I appreciate you investigating it. You don't need tangible direction, but somewhat just of guidance. direction, guidance. You, know, you guys kind of lean in, just do the sh kind of shorter term, or do you want to dive I mean, in and like, let's yeah, knock this thing out? Yes, option two. Are, are 50 foot poles even allowed? It, <laughs> probably not. Who would have been? Ellie's probably asked. sweating I was over there. To say, we... <laughs> I, the one thing I enjoy about the code is that uh, the phrase parks and open spaces exempt is yeah. found quite often. It's, it won't stop us from getting calls, though, no, about it. No. Oh. Yeah. I oh, will oh. tell you that most complaints I get about uh, skate park is, is the lighting up being on. Like Kobe says, too late at night. And it could even be down possibly to dusk and that would change the winter around too because neighbors of mine have complained about the lights being on when it's snowing in the middle of the night or not middle of the night at 9.59 nine. <laughs> they're particularly sense. bright when it's snowing if you've never actually yeah. seen them yeah. yeah, I believe that. <laughs> and to just kind of add to the bigger picture, through the context that we've received from those residents, like the amenities that are a little bit louder, the baseball fields, the sports, we've shoved them as far away from those houses as we can possibly get them with the site restrictions that we have. So we have done, we have listened to the community. We're planning for these things. So that does help in our messaging a little bit, I think. Option two, yes. palatable. Yeah. Yes. Easy one. Great. Sounds good. Thank you. Sounds great. Exactly. Thanks, Colby. Make it happen. Well done. Here all the time around that trail, and you guys did do such a great job. So, thank you. Now we just got to build all the new fancy stuff. Yeah. Very exciting. Yeah. Hopefully right. by the end of the week, this will be on the project website. So. All right. I really appreciate that you took tent camping off of here because I get a lot of emails about that. Yeah. So two things. Sometimes I'm I will trick people and put things in that I know they won't want just because it's like going to complain about something. Yeah, they're going to find something. I know that's horrible public service, but it's a hundred percent true. That was not that. That was like, could we have Boy Scout sites or stuff? Yeah, like that's that. not how people took it. No. This one we put did a hammock. Thing on the other side, where like next to our playground, so parents can sit and read a book. We thought that's probably enough. Well, oh, I love that. I don't want to manage camping. Trust me. No, I'm not. I did camping for ten years. Trust me. Much to my chagrin, I <laughs> added that in there. <laughs> no camping. It looks really nice, though. I like this bird. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Thanks, if you have what you need, anyway. Trustee reports next. Yeah, anyone have any items? To the spring symposium for Northern Water. Same old stuff. Yeah, symposium makes it sound fun. Yeah, they make it all fancy. There's a solid 400 people there, so. Um, they talk about the lawsuit with Miss. Everything's pretty much what they expected, so. Really not a lot to report. No, nothing new. Yeah. Okay. Chimney Hollow's all on track too. So. Okay. 
throws the best. I can't do the 26 because I had a previous engagement. I can't do the 26 either. Anybody else do the 26? Anybody want to do the 26? Those are two different questions. Can you and do you want to? I would like to, but I gotta look and see if there's something going on. I can let you know. The chamber. Well, the open. chamber event on the twenty sixth. <laughs> the chamber event's yeah. kind of cool. Yeah. It's a great date, actually. Yeah, good. <laughs> Definitely. I also have an obligation on the twenty sixth, so I might be able to get to you with my schedule then. The most team foreign diplomats that night. Ooh, fun. Foreign diplomats. Foreign diplomats. I'm so glad. I was like, that's a bunch of crap. I think you're lying. I'm, uh, my my uh, my girl from the Netherlands, her parents are in town that weekend. That's also my birthday weekend. Foreign diplomats. So foreign diplomats. Your birthday? Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Hey, 26. 26. <laughs> this is, this is, on the 26th? Yeah, right. Rough 26. Golden birthday. Rough. That's nice. On a back end. Um, okay, so we have one trustee who will check schedules. Um, yes. uh, I'll check too. I will join you. I will bring most likely one kid or another. I'm not sure who, but they will be my date. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Um, on that note, I have a um, obligation this weekend. Um, there is a, you're all familiar with Joy House. Mm -hmm. We utilize Joy, Joy House to, with our Christmas cards in the years past. Um, so Joy House is in between Frederick and Firestone. They're actually unincorporated, unincorporated Weld County. Um, so Seth is a student and um, he has um, Down syndrome, um, but he lives his life full of joy. So his parents built him a home in their backyard. Um, so that he can live independently, but um, with his family if he needs assistance. So he since then um, now creates all of his own artwork and is for sale in Estes Park and a couple of other different locations. Um, and then he has friends who have special abilities as well, and they sell all of their, um, you know, paintings or um, some of them do baked goods. And there's a variety of different things, but it's a lovely organization. They have a documentary coming out this Saturday, um, and they have a event at Rocky Mountain Church from 7 to 9. Um, and so they have the voice of the CU Buffs that's come, that's emceeing the event. Yeah, um, yes, yes. Um, so I have a table if anyone would like to attend and join. Um, it's just a two-hour event. It's at Rocky Mountain. I think I mentioned that. So if you're free, let me know. Um, it is a, I think it's a silent auction if you want to, but really they're showing a, uh, I think it's a 40-minute movie um, of their documentary. So right here in our backyard. So if you'd like to go, I would love to have you join the table um, and support I'm, I'm planning on going to that with you. Yeah. What night is it? It's on, let's see, Saturday the 13th, this Saturday. Okay. Yep. Not Friday the 13th, Saturday the 13th. So Dope. let me know if you're free. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, any items from this side of the table? I don't have anything right now. My sorry bean covered. Free voucher? Two items? Yeah. Okay. All right, we do have an executive session, so if you don't mind, I would like to entertain a motion to go into executive session after a short recess for a conference with our town attorney for the purpose of receiving legal advice on specific legal questions under CRS section 246402B regarding oil and gas. So moved. <laughs> They're all so excited. It was unanimous. Yeah, well. <laughs> but a spunk. Trustee Mahan? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem March? Yes. Trustee Padilla? Yes. Trustee Lamoff? Yes. Trustee Tavelli? Yes. Trustee Brown? Yes. Motion passes six to zero. Thank you. Thank you. All right, take a five minute recess. Sound okay? You betcha. Oh, um, I know it's tough to estimate, but how long?